G'day guys, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. Just a reminder, we have got the South Sydney Phantom coming on for an interview at 4pm to tell his story. It is some unreal content, the best thing you will listen to this week if you are a Rugby League lover. This is what the game is built on, these sort of moments, it's sensational. Now all the news in the last 24 hours in Rugby League, there has been a heap going on. The breaking news today, Sia Soliola, he has announced his retirement from Rugby League. We want to wish Sia all the very best. Tough as nails. I remember watching Sia coming through at the Roosters when he was 18, 19. I remember him taking on Ruben Wiki one night over at Mount Spart Stadium and almost getting murdered. And he has always just been a fantastic guy in our game. He's always been tough as nails. He came in as a pretty fancy sort of centre, moved into the back row, eventually ended up in the front row. He's been a guy that the Canberra Raiders have built their success around over the last few years. Didn't go to plan this year, but he was a critical piece in the Canberra Raiders rebuild, which saw them go to the grand final in 2009 against, of course, his former club, the Sydney Roosters. It should be noted when he did make his debut at the Roosters when he was very young, the coach then was Ricky Stewart. He then went over to England. I believe he played with St. Helens over there and Ricky Stewart decided that he was the sort of person that he needed to have back at the Canberra Raiders. He brought him back there and he became a real leader. So a sensational career for Sia Soliola. One of the good guys in rugby league and one of those fellas that everyone absolutely loves. Pretty crazy when you look at his career, he started off out in the centres and he was quite a fleet-footed little centre too. He was pretty handy uh, to then make his way into the front row. Now we saw him almost break his face in half last year. Uh, he has just been a tremendous rugby league player and a guy that our game will really miss. Now some news on the grand final this week. Apparently there has been a COVID breakout up there in Brisbane. So Townsville is on standby to host the grand final. Vlandis has come out and said that unless there is a lockdown, the grand final will be played in Brisbane this Sunday. So a little storyline to keep an eye on there. If it does get moved up to North Queensland, um, we know from the State of Origin game that was up there, it becomes a really fast track. Uh, there's next to no chance of rain. There probably isn't in Brisbane anyway, but it makes the grand final really, really interesting. No doubt about that. Uh, Tavita Pangai Jr., he's been seen in a brace apparently this week, so he is in doubt for the grand final this week. That would be a massive loss for the Penrith Panthers. I thought that when he was on the field last week, he was one of their best. He was sensational. We spoke about him this morning as well, about how he went after Christian Welsh in the first few minutes. And that's what you've got to do with Melbourne. You've got to show them no respect. You've got to let them know that you're here to win. You're here to take them on. I thought it was great to see from Tavita Pangai Jr., uh, there's been reports, apparently, that the Melbourne Storm, I don't know, in their in their uh, celebrations last year, apparently there was a video that was taken of them imitating some of the uh, boys from Mount Druitt that are in the Penrith team at the moment. Uh, it's reportedly uh, come out that apparently Ivan Cleary showed that to his players before they ran out the other day to take on the Melbourne Storm. Whether you buy into that one or not, I don't really know. Seems a little bit far-fetched to me. But an interesting storyline if it does turn out to be true. Um, over at the South Sydney Rabbitohs, Blake Taff. It looks like if he runs out on Sunday, which we all know he will, he will be named at fullback this afternoon for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. He will be the youngest player. So Sorry, not the youngest. The least experienced player to take part in an NRL grand final, which is pretty incredible. I, I'm actually just thinking back off the top of my head. I assume this means the NRL era because I know there was a man that actually made his debut for the Sydney Roosters in 1975, a centre. He only played two games of first grade. One of them uh, was the grand final in 75, the Roosters won. So we might have to do a bit of fact-checking there. I assume it's in the NRL era, Blake Taff will be the least experienced player to feature in a grand final. We're also hearing, according to Clark, his rugby league column, no real shock. You guys have known this for quite some time. I've been saying it, uh, that I believe he 
will probably be the halfback next year. Uh, it looks like he is the favourite to take that spot. He's played a lot of seven in his short career, in his young career, uh, but a lot of people have only seen him play fullback in first grade. So a big challenge for Blake Taft, but being able to show that he can handle the big stages in 2021, that'll put him in a great frame uh, to take on 2022. Over the Brisbane Broncos, Kevin Walters, have a listen to this, says the Broncos fullback battle will be between Tessie New, Jermaine Osaka, Herbie Farmworth and Selwyn Cobbo. So four guys fighting for that spot. Personally, I'd rather Reese Walsh over all of them, I think. Uh, crazy to think that at the start of last year, they had the same situation uh, and Reese Walsh was a little bit further down the list. And if it wasn't for him getting in a bit of Barney Rubble, he probably would have been the rookie of the year for the New Zealand Warriors without a preseason there and arriving there mid-season. So uh, they've got to take their licks on this one, the Broncos. But some really quality players there. I thought Tessie New was really good the back end of the season. I like Osaka. I've always been a fan of him. I know a lot of you aren't, but I think he has got a lot to offer. Whether he's going to be a full-time fullback, uh, it'll be very interesting moving forward. But with Reynolds in this team, they will be a different side. So don't rule Osako out. Herbie Farmworth, I absolutely love this guy. You guys know I've spoken about him a little bit on the podcast. He's been playing left center for them, and he's been incredibly damaging. He's just hard to handle. Uh, Selwyn Cobbo, though, this is the guy with the X factor. Yeah, this guy could be absolutely anything. He reminds me so much of Latrell Mitchell. It is not even funny. Just the way he moves, his body shape, his balance, he's just got it all. Very raw at the moment, no doubt about it, but he's got the ability to do anything in our game. I still think Tessie knew he really impressed me at the back end of last season. I, I thought he was a little bit overrated, to be perfectly honest with you, the start of the season. I remember they were calling him the next Darren Lockyer, which to me just seemed beyond ridiculous. But he was very impressive at the back end of the season. Still think the Lockyer comparison's crazy, but very impressive at the back end of the season. And I think you will see him start in round one in that fullback jersey. Uh, Tommy Turbo obviously won the Dally M medal last night. Congratulations to Turbo. Shocked no one there. Pretty incredible effort considering how many games he played. Should be noted at the Manly Seagulls Awards night. Uh, he took home Player of the Year, Players Player Award, and Members Choice Award. Uh, took home everything over the last few days, Tom Travojevic, and well-deserved after a fantastic season. We'll do a review of the Dally M teams over the next couple of hours, so stay tuned for that. Mitch Rain, the former Titans hooker, has met with the Eels, and the club is reportedly interested in offering him a deal. Mitch Rain's obviously been the Gold Coast Titans for a couple of years. Uh, probably hasn't played his absolute best footy there, but he's still been very solid. You saw what happened to the Eels once they lost Reed Marnie. It's, they sort of struggled a little bit. Ray Stone stepped in and did a good job. Not really an 80-minute nine, though, realistically. Um, I forgot who came in to replace Marnie originally, the other nine. I, I forget his last name. Uh, but he has he's left. I think it was Alasic, sorry. He's left. Uh, so to get a Mitch Rain, I think that'd be really good. I don't think any system in rugby league is worse off for having a hooker like Mitch Rain in their system. If you have injuries, good God, you could do so much worse than to have Mitch Rain there. He's an experienced guy, a uh, solid footballer. So I like this move by the Eels. I think people will laugh and giggle at it, but I mean, if something happens that we get to round one and Reed Marnie does an ACL, they would have been looking around with their, you know, dick in their hand, essentially. If they've got this guy in their system, definitely makes things a lot easier. That's all your news from the last 24 hours, guys. Stay tuned. Plenty more content coming today on the Rugby League Guru Podcast.